One of the more interesting stories about the Nintendo Switch has to be the return of third parties to Nintendo platforms. After the disaster that was the Wii U, a lot of developers abandoned ship. A lot of publishers decided to not publish their games on the Nintendo Wii U, and because of that, there was a huge drought of third party games on the Nintendo Wii U. But with the success of the Nintendo Switch, you've seen most of the major companies come back to Nintendo's platforms. And I say most because there's definitely one company that has sort of stuck out like a sore thumb, and that is actually EA. Well, recently during a conference call, EA CEO had some very harsh things to say about the Nintendo Switch, and a lot of people are already talking about this story and giving their two cents, but I think it's important to actually look at what was said and then sort of look at the history between EA and Nintendo to sort of what led up to this point, to see if maybe, just maybe, EA has some sort of justification for their statement on the Nintendo Switch and their lack of support of the system. So what exactly did EA say? What's the history between EA and Nintendo that led up to this point, point? and is EA somewhat justified in thinking this? That's what we're going to talk about in this this video so sit back relax make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that like button and let's talk about ea and nintendo and why ea is trashing the nintendo switch hey rgt85 hey sean oh my god it's stevie richards so during a conference call for EA's first quarter earnings, CEO of EA, Andrew Wilson, was asked about the Nintendo Switch sort of in two parts. Specifically, what was up with the support of the Nintendo Switch in general, and then about a specific game potentially coming to the Nintendo Switch. And what Andrew had to say about the Switch was definitely a head-scratcher. A lot of people were a bit offended by this, especially Nintendo owners, and a lot of just industry people in general were concerned and kind of confused about what Andrew had to say about the Nintendo Switch. So what did Andrew actually say about the Switch? Anytime we're evaluating platform conversations, we're really looking at a couple of things. One, does the game really fit the profile of the platform in terms of control or the community ecosystem? Two, do we think community playing on that platform would appreciate the game and go there, or would they prefer to play it somewhere else? We have a lot of data that would suggest a great many Switch owners also own a PS4 or Xbox One or PC, and very often choose to play the games that we make on those platforms, even though they have a Nintendo Switch and they enjoy a lot of great content on the Nintendo Switch. Now obviously they're pretty much saying that people aren't buying our games on the Nintendo Switch so we're not going to be supporting the system. But when you look at the games that have released from EA on the Nintendo Switch, it's kind of evident as to why. Obviously two of the major games that have released on the system have been FIFA 18 and FIFA 19. Now FIFA 18 of course was a early launch title for the system and I imagine it sold pretty decently. It seemed like a lot of people seemed to enjoy that game. FIFA 19 was a somewhat improved version of FIFA 18, and then of course we have Unravel 2. But Unravel 2, while it's a game that I feel would fit the Nintendo Switch perfectly, came out one year after the PS4 and the Xbox One versions of these games. So a lot of people that do own multiple platforms have already played this game if they really wanted to play it on the PS4 or the Xbox One. So I don't really think that's necessarily a great litmus test when it comes to the Nintendo Switch, basing it on just those three titles. Obviously games like FIFA are very popular, especially in countries like Europe and stuff, and it seemed like the the FIFA versions on, or the Switch versions of FIFA actually sold pretty decently. And of course, with Unravel, the game came out a year later, and that's sort of a history lesson that we're going to see with EA and Nintendo. But it's definitely very interesting that this was their effort. This is what they're basing all of their data on. This is what they're basing all of their statistics on, especially considering the fact that, yes, a lot of people do own multiple platforms, but in the same breath, a lot of people like to get burgers from various burger places. You might have a McDonald's and a Wendy's on the same street. Sometimes you want McDonald's, sometimes you want Wendy's. So all because there's multiple platforms and people own multiple platforms, you gotta remember the portability aspect of the system. That's what's gonna draw people into the system. If you're putting a good effort into the game coming to the Nintendo Switch, people are gonna wanna play it on the Nintendo Switch. People are going to want to bring that game with them wherever they go. And the second part of the question was actually about The Sims, which is a very popular EA franchise that once again is not on the Nintendo Switch, and many people feel this would be a perfect fit for the Nintendo Switch. Well, Andrew had to say the following about that. I wouldn't say The Sims would never go to the Switch, but I think we're doing really, really well attracting Sims players to other platforms. We did a promotion in the last couple of months and brought in 7 million new Sims players that we expect will engage in that community on a platform that is really tailored to user-generated content, creativity, and customization. 
So you're happy that you attracted more people to The Sims recently because of a promotion, but you don't want to potentially attract Nintendo Switch owners because these systems don't have, you know, user-created content and user-created sort of stuff that really make it popular because, you know, games like Minecraft and Super Mario Maker 2 don't exist on the Nintendo Switch. Like, those two games are based on user-created content, and they seem to be doing very well on the Nintendo Switch. A lot of people play Minecraft on the Switch. A lot of people are playing Super Mario Maker 2, which is pretty much creating your own levels, creating your own stuff in a game. So to say that user creation isn't an important thing for Sims to be on the Nintendo Switch is just absolutely ridiculous, especially considering you can take this system wherever you go. You could create your own Sim stuff and play your Sim stuff wherever you go. Sure, you could do it on mobile devices, but a lot of people would rather have it on the Nintendo Switch because you get better graphics than a mobile device. You have built-in controllers with the Joy-Cons for the Nintendo Switch. So that statement is just absolutely silly. We have to look at where EA is coming from though with this statement because EA and Nintendo's history is very very rocky to say the least when you look at things. Everything was good up until the Wii era. When you look at things like the N64, EA was putting all of their games on the N64. Their big sports games. Look at something like Madden 64. Madden 64 was arguably better than the PlayStation version because they used fully rendered 3D models for the characters in the game. It was actually the best looking version of Madden that was available at the time because the N64 was a powerful system. So Madden on the 64 was definitely a peak for EA when it comes to their relationship with Nintendo. When you look at EA and the GameCube, once again, you had a great relationship, whether you're talking about games like NBA Live or the Madden series. When you look at games like Fight Night Round 2 that featured a super punch-out version in that game that was exclusive to the Nintendo GameCube version of the game, once again, you had this great partnership going on. But everything definitely changed with the Nintendo Wii because Nintendo sort of went in a different direction. They decided to get out of the power game. And at, up until that point, you could do things like port your game to all the systems. Looking at the GameCube, the GameCube was arguably stronger than the PS2, maybe a little bit weaker than the Xbox, but it was easy to put all of the games across these multiple platforms forms because they were very similar in architecture when it came to how the games were actually rendered and how the games actually played. But with the Nintendo Wii, you had a different crossroads going on here. Nintendo essentially made a U-turn while Microsoft and Sony just kept going straight and getting more powerful systems. With the Nintendo Wii, you couldn't just take a base PS3 or an Xbox 360 game and port it to the Wii. Now that's not to say that EA did not support the Nintendo Wii because honestly, they did. You had games like Madden on there. You had games like NBA Live on there. You even had exclusive games like Dead Space Extraction. While it wasn't a standard Dead Space experience, it was an on-rails game, it was actually a really good game. I thought it looked fantastic on the Wii and was one of the better third-party games on the Nintendo Wii. The problem with the Nintendo Wii was a lot of games got overlooked on the system because so many damn games came out on the Nintendo Wii. So EA wasn't very profitable on the Nintendo Wii when it came to their game sales on the system. So when the Wii U came around, of course, you had this unprecedented partnership with EA that was coming and at first EA dumped all their games on the Wii U and it seemed like it was going to be a good relationship. You had games like Madden. You had games like Mass Effect 3 also come to the Nintendo Wii U as well whereas the other previous Mass Effect games didn't come to the system. So why didn't Mass Effect 3 do well on the Nintendo Wii U? Because they released a trilogy right around the same time on the other platforms that was the exact same price. It was $60 for Mass Effect 3 on the Nintendo Wii U or you could get the trilogy of games on the PS3 and the Xbox 360 60 for $60. So really, why would you buy Mass Effect 3 on the Nintendo Wii U unless you did not own a PS3 or an Xbox 360? If Mass Effect 3 would have came out around the same time as it released on other platforms, sure, you might have had a fighting chance, but releasing a trilogy right alongside of this version of the game was just absolutely silly. But the game that I feel definitely drove the stake into the heart of the Nintendo and EA relationship has to be Need for Speed Most Wanted You. Now this was a game that had already released on other platforms, so right then and there it has something going against it. Of course, the Wii U did not get out of the gate very fast, so system sales were very low for the system. So once again, it's not going to have a really great chance to shine like it would on a more successful platform. Considering the PS3 and the Xbox 360 versions of the game were like $20 at this time, and releasing it for full price on the Wii U was yet another 
another disaster piece. Now that's not to say that Need for Speed Most Wanted You wasn't a great game, because honestly, it was better than the PS3 and the Xbox 360 versions of the game, including in terms of graphics. They actually used graphics from the PC version of the game and PC textures and put it in the Wii U version of the game. It looked absolutely phenomenal, but the fact that it was available cheaper on other platforms and it had already released on other platforms just drove a stake into the Wii U version of this game because nobody was really buying the Wii U at the launch of the system. So, so really that's how we got to this point with EA and Nintendo. Things like the Wii, things like the Wii U really soured the relationship and I could sort of understand why it did sour the relationship, but is EA justified in their thought process with not bringing games to the Nintendo Switch in 2019 and beyond? No, because things change. Things change for companies. When you see success, you're supposed to go towards that success. You want to be able to capitalize on that success. The Nintendo Switch has sold nearly 40 million units. It's going to eclipse the Xbox One very, very soon. Could you imagine EA saying, oh, we're not going to put our games on the Xbox One anymore because it's the weakest selling system on the market? No, of course not. And the Nintendo Switch has done it in less than half the time to get to this 40 million units than the Xbox One did. So to say that it's not a good business partnership is just absolutely ludicrous to me. When you look at all the third party companies that are coming back, look at companies like Bethesda. When was the last time Bethesda supported a Nintendo system? Now all of a sudden you have Elder Scrolls, you have Doom, you have Doom Eternal, Wolfenstein 2, Wolfenstein Youngblood, you just had the trilogy of Doom games released. Like Bethesda is one of the biggest companies and supporters of the Nintendo Switch and they're a Western developer that has never really worked well with Nintendo. Look at Microsoft, another company that you wouldn't expect to be working sort of with Nintendo, but when you have games like Cuphead, Super Lucky's Tale, The Outer Worlds, and Minecraft on your Nintendo Switch, these are games that are assimilated with the Microsoft brand because Microsoft owns these companies, or at least help develop these games. So I think it's absolutely ridiculous that EA is just sort of stuck in the past with their mentality. I know a lot of people don't necessarily like EA games, and I get that because EA is a very pompous company. They do a lot of things like microtransactions. They are sort of viewed as the villain when it comes to video game developers and publishers, but I think there's still good stuff that comes out of EA. The fact that Madden is not available on the Nintendo Switch is absolutely ridiculous. And you know what? It probably wouldn't sell as well as it did on the PS4 or the Xbox One in its first year. But I think the portability aspect of Madden would be absolutely huge. And I think a lot of people would gravitate towards that, especially in the United States, because it would be a way to play a console Madden wherever you go. EA's thinking is definitely very backwards. And I think that's why they have this preconceived notion in the video game industry as sort of this bad guy, because they don't understand the video game landscape. They don't understand what's going on. And they can sit there and spout all these business statistics, but at the end of the day, you gotta put your money where your mouth is. If you're releasing two versions of FIFA and Unravel 2 a year later than it came out on the other platforms on the Nintendo Switch, and that's your deciding factor to not support a system, that's absolutely ridiculous to me. So those are my thoughts on the EA and Nintendo partnership. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this stroll down memory lane with EA and Nintendo, and I definitely want to hear what you guys have to say in the comments section down below. So let me know what you think about this video in the comments, what you think of EA and Nintendo's relationship, and what it could potentially be going forward in the future. And as always, guys, thank you for checking out this video. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications. Check out other videos on the channel, and as always, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Later.